In this video, we'll walk through the process of collecting data once you're in a session that you've started, as well as collecting notes in Hierasmus. So I have obviously started my session. Right now I'm on a web browser, uh, but we are an app as well, and the fun functionality is identical on the app as it is on the web browser. So essentially uh, your view will be tailored to whatever kind of device you're on, um, but you'll always have this blue bar along the top. Um, and on this bar, you may have some programs that your supervisor has pinned to the top so you can have quick, easy access to those particular programs. Um, your session timer will always live here and it should automatically start. Um, if you have an instructions only program pinned to the top, uh, it'll just appear as the I and you'll be able to see the title and then click in to get more details there. With this particular program, um, I'm going to collect a little bit of data just so you can get some exposure to what that looks like. Um, you simply tap on the target and then select what level of prompting you've used. So for Bennett specifically, we're tracking signs paired with vocal for his manding. And so I'm just documenting what level of prompting was used here. Um, now, something that you might note, uh, there are these colored blocks above a lot of my targets, uh, and I want to make sure that you understand what those mean. So those colors indicate the last time that that target was run, either in this session or in a session prior, uh, what level of prompting was used. So for instance, I know that the last time Bennett manded for a drink, he required a full model prompt. Um, but as I continue to take data, that color will change to reflect that most recent prompt level. So that can be a helpful cue to you, uh, letting you know kind of where your learner left off. You'll also see some numbers. Uh, this, this second number lets you know the total number of trials that have been run within that session. And this first number is the number of successful trials uh, that have been run today. All right, um, this is a behavior frequency program. So I simply tap on those targets to record occurrences that I've observed. If I get a little too tap happy, this undo button will appear uh, next to that program once I've collected any data. So I can always hit undo to retract those most recent trials. You also have the capability to do a long tap and hold. Uh, so if uh, there's a high rate of behaviors and you want to document those all at once without having to tap your tablet uh, 10 times in this instance, um, that makes that a little bit easier for you as well. If you see a target like this, that indicates that it's a duration target. So you can simply tap on that target uh, in this case to start my timer, and I can tap on it again to stop my timer. And you can do that as many times as um, is appropriate. Um, so based off of what you're observing, you can record multiple uh, observances and, um, and then just tap whenever you wanna stop your timer. So you'll see a cumulative total here. Um, but then one cool thing is if you want to check out those, uh, the history of that session, um, you can see um, that it actually automatically graphs in real time and you can see just how long each individual occurrence was there as well. All right, you can have interval programs, which will appear like this. Uh, and then this last program here is for ABC data. So if you see this icon on a learner's page, uh, that indicates that they have an ABC program. And if a learner has this icon, um, you'll also see it before even starting a session. So this uh, ABC data is actually accessible in or out of a session. So here's where I can specify um, start time, uh, end time, if it's different from the current time. Otherwise, a timer automatically starts whenever you um, select that program. You can choose from some uh, pre-inputted antecedents, behaviors, and consequences that your BCBA put in there for you. You can also um, type to add a novel thing. So let's say this took place at the library. I can hit uh, enter after typing that, and that adds that as a new line item. 
I also have a space for anecdotal notes uh, if I want to provide a little bit more context uh, other than what is indicated in the drop downs. And then I can hit save entry to save that away. All right, now looking here in kind of the core of my session, um, you'll see that it's really easy for me to see the phase of each of these targets. So this target we're probing, these ones are an acquisition, so we're actively teaching those. And then these ones have been mastered, but they're showing up because they're on a maintenance schedule. Uh, and so I can make sure that I am also ensuring that my learner is maintaining those skills by running those as well. I'll tap on these targets and take a little bit of data so you can see what that process looks like. All right, and you'll notice that this target turned a pale green color once I hit three trials. Uh, that just means that there's a workflow in the background uh, where there's a minimum number of trials that need to be run in order for this target to count toward or against the mastery criteria. And so doing so, um, that, that green signal is a good signal letting me know that I'm good to go. I can run on to the next session. Now I can, under each program, add some program level notes. So let's say Bennett has a loose tooth and that's impacting as a coex that day. I can jot down um, some details that my BCBA might want to know. I also have the ability to add a photo or record a video and have that uh, linked to my data as well. Um, and so that can help provide a little bit more context to uh, the data um, and the programs that you're running. Here, I also have the ability to actually start working on my session notes. So when I select this icon and then hit edit session notes, I'll be able to select um, and start working through my session note template here. Um, this can be great because I can, for instance, start my summary here, add some details uh, before I forget them, and then I can just minimize that. It will save my spot, um, and then I can pick up um, with that whenever I have another natural lull within my session or at the very end of my session as well. I can get to other programs a few different ways. So I can use these arrows to navigate to different programs. I can also hit this tab and navigate uh, easily from one program to the next. And lastly, if you prefer seeing everything all on the same page, uh, you can hit this square icon and that will pull up all of that learner's programs. So this makes it pretty easy to, to effortlessly bounce from a motor imitation to an echoic and back and forth. Um, so just making your, um, your processes a little bit um, more intuitive for um, whatever type of uh, programming you're running. You can always hit this to zoom in to your specific program if you want to see that in a little bit more detail as well. Once you're ready to end your session, you'll select finish session and um, you can opt to finish that client session for the day or if another staff member is working with that same learner, you can finish and hand it off to another therapist so you have some options there. Here I'll select OK. And that will take me right to where I left off with my session notes. So I can go ahead and wrap this up.